The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Do little girls still dream of growing up and becoming queens? Probably not. Queens are no longer glamorous. And yet, there is a country in this world where a queen still holds power. Where she rules, as well as reigns, an absolute monarch who holds her throne by divine right. A queen whose smile may mean life and whose frown can mean death. I'm afraid I must insist, Miss Denison. I'll be forced to kill you. You can't kill me. How can you say that? Because you don't exist. Miss Denison, I do exist. No, you don't. Because this is a dream. You are not dreaming. This knife is real. If you insist on dying, it's your fault. <gasps> oh, you... You stab me. Oh, why, why don't I wake up? Why, why don't I wake up? Why? Our mystery drama, The Queen of Darkness was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Julie Harris. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Statistics say that many of them have problems making a living. The record shows that even the successful ones burn out quickly. And yet, we have no shortage of actors and actresses. By acting, we mean that mysterious magical force which creates in an audience the almost religious conviction that the performer on stage is the embodiment of a living truth. Josephine Dennison is such an actress. Some say she was born with the gift. Others claim it was refined and purified by long years of tedious application. Does it matter? Josephine Dennison only knows this. She is 38 years old and she is out of work. Well, she's been out of work before, but never has she been so absolutely, completely and totally out of work as she is right now. Joe, you've had it. Don't say that. I have to say that. You're washed up, through, finished. How, how, how could this happen to me? It's, it's ridiculous. I'm a good actress. You're a great actress. I don't know why it happens. It's just, Joe, you know the only call I had for you in the last week? Somebody wanted me? Some clown, some character wanted you to be the queen in some pageant. And, and you turned it down. Joe, you played Joan of Arc. You've done Shakespeare. What are you supposed to do now? Go back to Cheesecake like some winner in a beauty contest? If that's all there is. If you need money to pay the rent, I'm always... I don't need money. I need a job. Jimmy, what kind of queen was I supposed to be, and, and who wanted me? Ah, some phony. You could tell by looking at him. A smooth talker. I think he was some kind of foreigner. But what was it about? I'll never know. I threw him out of the office. Jimmy, I'll do anything. You know how it is. Yeah, I know how it is. But you don't. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I just don't know what's the matter. I can't figure people out. I don't know why these things happen. Well, don't feel so bad, Jimmy. Sooner or later, the longest streak of luck, good or bad, has to change. Quit dreaming, Joe. Don't tell me to stop dreaming, Jimmy. What else is left? My lights on. Good evening, Miss Dennison. Who? Who are you? How did 
did you get into my apartment? What do you want? You have just asked me a complex question. It consists of three parts. Just tell me. Of course. I will tell you everything in good time. What do you mean in good time? Uh, my dear Miss Dennison, I am a native of a civilized country. One does not boorishly blurt out one's business upon initial confrontation. <laughs> Americans seem to have so little time for the ceremonies, the niceties. I am here to offer you a job. You'll have to speak to my agent. I have spoken to your agent. The man is an idiot. Are you a theatrical producer? No. What are you? I am a Grand Duke. A what? I am the Grand Duke Arsan of Dalran. Dalran? Well, surely you have heard of my country. Oh, I think so. Uh, what, what do you want with me? First, we shall have dinner. You must be my guest. I, I don't feel like going anywhere. We shall dine here. I don't want to sound inhospitable, but uh, I have nothing in the house. Wait a minute. Yes. Sniff again. That heavenly aroma is coming from your own kitchen. But how? My servants are preparing a feast fit for a queen. Raina, Loro, wheel in the table at once. I, I don't... I, I can't... Believe it. None of this can be happening. Trust the evidence of your senses, my dear. But what is the meaning? The wine will grow warm and the food become cold uh, later. Right now, we must perform a ritual, Miss Dennison. We shall celebrate dinner. May I fill your glass? No, no, thank you. I, I've had enough of everything. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed your dinner. I've read of feasts like this, but I never thought... Would you care to dine this way every night? No, I don't think I could stand it. You could learn? Your Highness, or Your Excellency, is it? No, our son is good enough. Is it permissible to talk about business now? Entirely appropriate. Uh, you are wondering why I am here. Let's say I'm at least mildly curious. Mm. You know very little about my country. Well, that's true. But my country knows a great deal about you. Do you know you are the most popular actress in Dalran? Oh, you're joking. Uh -huh. I haven't been in a movie in almost four years. Oh, but your television series was... Oh, well, why must we talk about... Everything in which you ever appeared lives, flourishes in Dalran. <laughs> Do you know what all this is? It's a dream. No, Miss Dennis. Yes, it's a dream. Miss Dennison, a dream. I assure you, I am real. Oh, please. Now, be good enough to hear me out. Besides, this is my dream, and I should like to do some of the talking. But why do you insist you are dreaming? <laughs> because I need this dream. I must have this fantasy. You see, I have reached what can only be considered the nadir of my existence. Nonsense. Oh, you're very kind, but the handwriting is on the wall. We simply disappear. Some of us drop by the wayside as soldiers fall in battle, victims of random misfortune. And now, it seems, a whole new generation of producers has come along. And they never heard of me. I insist that you listen to me. You are practically worshipped in Dalran. <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah, see... What I have in this folder. Newspaper clippings. Magazine articles. Ah, you cannot read the Ranis, but you can make out your name and you can certainly recognize your pictures. Certainly. Uh-huh. What do you say now? I say it's significant. Let me tell you about the job I wish to offer you. No. <laughs> Not now. Right now, I'm tired. I'm even too tired to dream anymore. Very well, then. I shall call on you tomorrow. Yes, 
tomorrow. You do that. Call on me tomorrow. Jill. Oh? Huh? Jill, wake up. Huh? It's noon time. Oh, 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 Sally. You've got to get up. You should be making the rounds. Well, you should be out there roiling the water. What are you doing here, Sally? Oh, the show folded. Well, why don't you go to your own place? My marriage folded, too. He gets custody of the apartment. Do you uh, mind if I move in with you for a while? Oh, let me go back to sleep. I was having such a fantastic dream. And say, what kind of party did you have here last night? Party? Yeah, the kitchen. It's loaded with champagne. Champagne? And in the refrigerator. Caviar and steaks. What are you talking about? And there's an enormous basket of fresh fruit. And Sally. Sally. What's the matter? I'm dreaming. I'm still dreaming. Oh, how can you be dreaming? You're wide awake. No, I am dreaming. And you're part of it. <sighs> Now, let me get out of bed. I'll prove it. Come with me. Prove what? Prove this is a dream. Sure. Here they are. They're still here. Look at these papers, these, these magazines. Hmm. Hey, what language is that? A phony language from a phony country that I'm dreaming about. Dalran. Oh, did you ever hear of Dalran? <sighs> I I can't read this, but I see your pictures. Oh, you must be the hottest property in that country. Ah, here you thought you were all washed up. I told you, you must never quit on yourself. I know, that's why I'm dreaming. Answer it. Oh, it has to be for you. Well, go ahead, if it keeps ringing, it'll wake me up, and this dream is too beautiful to lose right now. Hello? Home? Is that the Grand Duke Arsan? Who's calling, please? The Grand Duke Arsan. Joe, how did you know? It's my dream. I know everything. I'll speak with him. But, Joe, you're not... Hello? Miss Denison, uh, would it be convenient to come by and discuss an important matter of business, say, in about an hour? Uh, let me consult my calendar. Ah, yes. It so happens I shall be free. In an hour, then. Oh, one moment, sir. I assume you wish to discuss an acting assignment. Of course. You should be apprised of the fact that my minimum fee is $25,000 in advance. Of course. In exactly one hour, then, I shall grant you an interview. Joe, what were you saying? <laughs> Does it matter? Oh, what do I have to lose? It's only a dream. I... I think you ought to see a doctor. And so, we should like you to come to Dalran to be the star of our millennia. Your what? Your country has merely approached its bicentennial. Mine is celebrating the 1,000th year of our holy monarchy. I see. The greatest moment of our history occurred when our first queen was crowned a thousand years ago. Her immortal speech is memorized by every schoolchild. Someone had the idea to have an actress portray our legendary empress. And at first, everyone shouted, blasphemy. But then I said, let us invite Josephine Dennison, who is idolized by our population. How can I deliver this speech? I can't speak your language. Oh, you are an actress with a marvelous ear. You could recite it perfectly. On Saturday, you will appear before the country in our national network in ceremonial robes as Queen Amara. That's the day after tomorrow, Joe. Coronation Day. Let us discuss my fee. A certified check for $25,000 has already been deposited in your bank. The royal plane leaves at 7 this evening. You will be picked up here at 5. Good day. Well, what do you say now? Still think you're dreaming? Oh, come on. 
The Grand Duke of San, the Kingdom of Dalran, the Warrior Queen. Oh, it's a crazy fantasy. Dream mixture of a thousand plays I've been in. Or read. Well, is it a dream or isn't it? Whatever it is, Josephine Dennison is in the grip of it. I'll be back with both dreams and realities in just a few moments. Every actress yearns for a dream part. But Josephine Dennison is convinced she is playing a part in a dream. But for an actress, the only reality is the theater. And so, awake or asleep, she is determined to prepare for the part of the Queen of Dalran. How does an absolute monarch hold her head, her shoulders? What is a regal smile, a royal frown, an imperial gesture? Joe, don't you want to think about this? Think about what? Well, it's, it's now just ten minutes before noon. A man offers you a job. He's not just a man. He's a Grand Duke. In five hours, you'll be out of the country. Well, what's the problem? Well, shouldn't you check this out a bit more carefully? It, 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 it's all happening too quickly. Suppose there's some danger involved well, here. Sally, nothing can happen to me. Why do you say that? Because this is only a dream. Mm. Look, look, Joe, call your bank. A ask if the money was deposited. Of course it was. Well, call them. Do me the favor. Certainly. Is there anything else you want me to do? Oh, please. Take this thing seriously. Yes? Oh, Mr. Howland, please. And also call Jimmy Higgins. Uh, uh, this is Miss Dennison. Has a deposit been made to my account today? I know Jimmy hasn't done much for you lately. Well, that's the understatement of the year. How much? A certified check for $25,000. Thank you. You should have heard the tone of absolute deference in that little flunky's voice. He made me feel like a queen. Just a minute. Yes? Are you Miss Josephine Dennison? Oh, well, that's hardly a flattering question to ask an actress. I'm not in the flattery business. Well, whatever business you're in, I'm afraid I don't have time to talk to you. I'm about to leave the country. I'm in the intelligence business with your government. I beg your pardon? My name is Harold Foster. My credentials. Oh. Well, I'm impressed. May I come in? Well, I'll have to pack while we talk. Well, sit down anywhere. Thank you. Miss Dennison, why are you going to Dalran? Why is that your affair? Your government is interested. Why? You're the first American private citizen who has been permitted to enter that country in 50 years. Really? Dalran is an absolute monarchy. The queen rules by divine right. She holds the power of life and death. Sounds medieval. It is. Why are you going there? I've been invited to appear in their millennial celebration to play the part of their legendary queen. I find that difficult to believe. Do you? Why? How would they ever have heard of you? Mr. Foster, I admit I haven't been working lately. But I am a rather well-known actress. The most famous actress in the world would still be unknown to the natives of Dalran. And why do you say that, Mr. Foster? Because the monarchy does not allow the import of any foreign films or books or publications of any sort. How do you know? Miss Dennison, it's a fact. The monarchy is afraid the pure and innocent and orthodox minds of the Dalranese will be subverted by dangerous democratic ideas. But I have been informed that I am the favorite actress of the Dalranese. My films, my TV... Impossible. No American film has ever been permitted to be shown there. Suppose I were to tell you that the movie fan magazines in Dalran are constantly filled with articles about me. It would be my sad duty to inform you that you're mistaken. Why? Because it's impossible. There are no movie fan magazines in Dalran. There aren't? Definitely not. 
We have been assured by our experts on Dalvinese affairs that such trivial publications are banned in the interests of the state. It's comforting to know that we have such knowledgeable experts. Would you care to look at these? Well, what a... Well, obviously, these are Dalrenese magazines. Obviously, they are about the movies. Obviously, those are my pictures. But this is... Yes? <sighs> May... May I take these back to the office? Oh, certainly. Miss Dennison, could you postpone your trip? There's something about this entire setup. I don't like it. I say this... For your own safety. What could happen to me? Miss Dennison, I wish you would listen. I have a commitment to appear before the cameras the day after tomorrow. I'm asking you to wait. And I'm asking you to tell me why. Well, all I have to go on is my instinct as an intelligence officer. Is your instinct worth $25,000? <sighs> I know it's a lot of money, but... And even if they weren't paying me a nickel, I'd go no matter what. I'm afraid I don't understand. Why? It's very simple. The show must go on. Well, how do I look? Magnificent. You are the queen, the warrior queen. Why did you want me in costume? It is not a costume, my dear. This is how every queen of Dalran has dressed since Amara the First. When we land at the airport, we shall be greeted by a god of honor, a band, a crowd. You have no idea how popular you are in my country. But a god of honor? Everyone knows you shall be portraying our ancient and holy queen, Amara. Couldn't I just go quietly to my hotel and study my lines? Let me hear you speak them again. Ide me, ide tu, ide me, ishe du. Ah, spoken like a native. What does it mean? Our first queen, our immortal Amara, stood triumphantly on the battlefield and said, In God's name, I conquer. In God's name, I rule. Ah, home was never like this, was it? Why? Why are they so fond of me? Oh, no, it, it can't be the crowd. People are bowing, kneeling. Why? The millennia has begun. You are the ancient queen. I, I never thought anything to this was possible. You have never lived in a monarchy. Oh, but you must be tired. I shall radio the escort to move quickly. Where am I staying? As a royal guest, you must stay at the palace. Oh, it's the most magnificent room I've ever seen. I'm sure you must be very tired. I am. <laughs> Strange. You can get tired of dreaming. I hope I don't wake up before my great speech. Everything you will need is here... And this is Tekla. She does not speak a word of English, but you will find her a splendid maid. Why, she's... Oh, she's beautiful with her looks and... Well, she should... She could go far. In Dalran, one follows the fortunes of one's family. For a thousand years, the women in her family were servants. But that's... That's... That's an excellent arrangement. People know their place. They know who they are, what they are, what's required of them. Thus, we have no problems of identity, no feelings of insecurity. I think that's ridiculous. Well, obviously, we differ. Till tomorrow. Good night. Uh, well, um, uh, Tekla, uh, is that your name? Tekla. Well, I, I don't think I'll need anything, so you're free to go. Oh, I... I forget you don't speak English. I speak English. Oh! Oh, well, that's, mm. that's great. I need 
I want culture. In my mother's time, culture people speak French. Before then, culture people speak German. Today, culture people speak English. Even you, even Queen, you do not speak Daran. You speak English. Did you say I was the Queen? I work hard to get job in palace. So one day I can kill you. What are you saying? For one thousand years, you and nobility have oppressed common people. Now, you pay. But I'm not, uh, look, I, I, I'm not, I, I'm a movie actress. What is movie actress? I am Josephine Dennison. I'm, I'm Dalran's favorite actress. You are Queen Amara. Oh, hey. I will kill you. Hey, put down that knife. In name of the people. All right, I might just as well get out of this dream right now. I kill you in name of freedom. Oh, oh, why, oh, why don't I wake up? Oh, why don't I wake up? <laughs> Why doesn't she wake up? There can be only one reason. Perhaps she wasn't asleep in the first place. One thing should be obvious. It's a hazardous business to impersonate a queen in a country like Dalran, where, evidently, they take these things quite seriously. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. people who find excitement in dreams. The dream world can be filled with the most dangerous hazards, and these can be faced boldly, resolutely, without hesitation. Because, after all, what can happen? At the point where one falls into the sea among the ravenous sharks, or the split second before the bullet enters the brain, or the knife pierces the heart, one wakes up and is saved. Josephine Dennison has been counting on being rescued by reality, but she has already taken the point of the knife, and there is blood and pain. And either she isn't waking up, or she's been wide awake all the time. No! Don't! I... I... Oh. No. I cannot. I see blood... I cannot. I cannot murder. Oh, get me uh, a handkerchief. So, so, oh, some cold water. Take the knife. Kill me. Kill me. I deserve to die. Now, nobody's going to die. Oh, what am I doing here? Why don't I wake up? For years, I have planned to kill the queen, to free the people. I'm not dreaming. What? When I see blood, I have no courage. Oh, kill me. Kill me, your majesty. Oh, shut up, will you? I have raised my hand to my ruler. I must die. Now, that's enough. I'm not the queen. You know me. I'm Josephine Dennison. Josephine? Dennison? Yes, your favorite actress. The biggest hit. In all Dalran. I have never heard. I have come here to read the speech of Queen Amara in the millennial celebration. Oh, yes. Queen Amara. You are Queen Amara. No, I'm not the queen. I'm an actress dressed as the queen. What? It is death for any to dress as the queen. I'm going to read the queen's speech. The speech Queen Amara the First made a thousand years ago. Speech? Yes, the speech. The speech that begins, Ide me, Ide tu. No. Ide me, Ide No. No. 
Please. What's the matter? I try to kill you be before I know you. But you are good, kind. Oh, do not, do not leave us. Do not, do not. Oh, what, what is English word in, in the run mean? Step down from throne. Abdicate. Do not abdicate. You are good queen. But I'm not saying anything like that. It means, in God's name I conquer, in God's name I rule. No. It means, ide me, ide tu, ide me, ishe do. It means, in God's eyes, I am unworthy. In God's name, I abdicate. Well, that's... That's impossible. Oh, why do I say it's impossible, Tekla? Yes. Listen, listen to the rest of the speech and tell me what it means. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the one I threw out of my office. It's Jessup. Is he the man? The one who made Miss Dennison the offer? Oh, there's no doubt at all in my mind. Oh, what kind of a con artist are we dealing with here, Mr. Forster? He's not a con artist. He's actually the Grand Duke Arsan of Dauran. You mean there is such a guy? There is such a place? Oh, yes. Well, if everything's on the level, why are we worried? Especially the government. In the first place, there is no such thing in Dauran as a millennial celebration. Well, then why would the guy... There are no movie that... fan magazines published there either. I saw them. And you've got them on your desk. These are fakes. They were printed over here. But if this guy's legit, what's with the phony story? I have a picture here. Recognize it? Yeah, sure, it's Joe. Miss Jessup? Well, she never wore her hair like that, but it's Joe. No. It's Queen Amara of Dalran. The Queen? But she look. She's the image of Joe. Yeah. For a reason we're unaware of, they want somebody in that country to impersonate the queen. What's going to happen to Joe? Hopefully nothing. What do you mean, hopefully? Well, it's a very violent country. Tomorrow she'll be on the national network. At least we know she'll be okay till then. Now, look, you just can't sit around here and do nothing. I'm not going to be sitting around here. I'm leaving for Dalran. <laughs> I don't believe it. I can't believe it. In this speech, you say, I am too weak, too ill, too unworthy. I abdicate my throne in favor of Iola Arti. Iola Arti? That's someone's name? Yes. That is sister of... Grand Duke Arsan. Oh, let me get this whole business straight. The Grand Duke wants to get his sister made the queen. So he creates a story to get me here to pose as the present queen and abdicate in her favor. Do you understand what I'm telling you? No. How does he know your people will accept his sister as the queen? Ah, the old queen appoints. New queen. What do you mean? When old queen wish to rule no more, she appoint new queen. Where is the queen? The queen. The queen is here. You are queen. No, no, I'm talking about the queen. Now, where is the real queen? <laughs> The queen? Uh, well, uh, you see, the queen is not well. Oh? In the ordinary way, she would read the traditional speech, but uh, since she is indisposed, you are, as you would say in your country, pinch-hitting. Oh. Then I suppose we could say that... Uh... I'm not here as an actress playing a part. I'm actually posing as the queen. 
Precisely. That isn't quite the way this job was sold to me. Ah, well... And my opening lines do not really mean in God's name I conquer, in God's name I rule. No? What do they mean? In God's name I am unworthy. In God's name I abdicate. Whatever gave you such an idea? And I abdicate in favor of Iola R.D., who happens to be your sister. So, what has become of the queen? Queen Amara is dead. Really? How did it happen? Well, let us say her time had come. Ah, and who knows about it in addition to you and me? A small, select group, no doubt. <laughs> you are a brilliant woman, Miss Denison. And afterward, what was supposed to become of me? In time, you would be released quietly and you could return home. That's an unfortunate word, released. It implies that I would be a prisoner. Well, you are a prisoner. You will be in a form of custody... Restricted to an estate in a remote province. Uh, you would live comfortably, even luxuriously. Well, I'm not interested in the part as it has been rewritten. And I shall not appear. May I have a lift to the airport? I'm afraid not. You can't force me to read that speech. Would you rather be shot? Oh, I see. The sophistication is only a veneer. You're basically a barbarian. You have, as I said, two choices. Read the speech or die. You think you can get away with killing me? Duke Arsan. Who? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. I shall speak with him immediately. Show him into the audience chamber. <laughs> May I serve you, Mr. Uh, Foster? Your Highness, I wish to speak with Josephine Dennison. Uh, Miss Dennison? Yes. She is here to portray your queen. Ah, Mr. Foster, if you knew anything at all about our customs, you would know it is sacrilege for an act. We know, to... sir, that you engaged her in New York City for precisely this purpose. Who dares accuse me of this utterly false and criminal... I... I resent this baseless accusation, this slur upon my personal integrity. Your Highness, I have never heard of Miss Josephine Dennison. I have never met Miss Josephine Dennison. I can tell you nothing of Miss Josephine Dennison. And that, sir, must end the matter. Well, Miss Dennison, obviously there shall be no international incident. How do I know that I won't be quietly disposed of after I abdicate? Now, what motive would I have for killing you? How do I know I won't be shot or killed afterward? Refuse to deliver the speech and you will be killed immediately. This way, at least you can enjoy the suspense. <laughs> Your Majesty, do not leave. Look, Tekla, how many times do I have to tell you I'm not the Queen? You are the Queen. Why do you think I'm the Queen? Because God says you are Queen. And I see now, you are good Queen. Tell me, if you were Queen... I? Queen? Suppose God says Tekla shall be Queen. What would you do? What? Would I do? You wanted to kill me because I was bad. What would a good queen do? A good queen would help the people. The poor people. Peasant people. A good queen would not be queen of darkness. A queen of darkness? All queens are queen of darkness. I see. What are you going to do? My dear, I shall wait. I shall wait for God to tell me. Peers of the land, nobles, gentry, soldiers, 
Silence! And people, silence for the Queen of Darkness! Speak! Speak! People of Dalran, I choose to speak in English. Oh, what are you? I am Queen. A divine voice speaks within me. Who is she? She's not the queen. Arrest him. Uh, uh, Listen to me, people. She is... Silence him. Uh, 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 Listen. Uh, uh, Remove him. uh, 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 People, I have been commanded by the divine voice to abdicate the throne. It is to be my fate to leave this lovely country. I have been commanded to appoint a new queen... From now on, the queen shall no longer be a queen of darkness. She shall be known as the queen of light. The divine voice within me commands that the first queen of light shall be Tekla. Your majesty. I kneel before the new queen. Let the multitude kneel also. But, Your Majesty... You wanted to help your people. Now, let's see you do it. How will you turn out? A queen of light? Or a queen of darkness? But I... Hail the queen! Oh, how can I ever thank you? What can I do for you? Put me on the first plane headed for America. You remember, of course, the queen who abdicated some time ago and came here. She pursued a rather successful career as an actress. She reminded so many people of an actress. uh, Josephine Dennis, uh, Denson, uh, something like that. You know how it is in showbiz. People come and go. Like skyrockets, they flare up in momentary brilliance and then fall silently into the unknown darkness. I, however, shall return with some light in just a few moments. How are things in Dalran? What kind of queen did Tekla turn out to be? I'm sorry. We only give you one story at a time. It is certainly the classic situation. The idealistic young reformer who wishes to change the system suddenly acquires unlimited power. Who changes? What changes? The system or the reformer? Well, we don't have definite answers to these philosophical questions, but you must admit, we certainly kick them around. Our cast included Julie Harris, Robert Dryden, Evie Juster, and Gordon Gould. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. But who could that be? I'm afraid I know. Jerry Ferris tried to reach you half hour ago. He left word to call him. Honey, why didn't you tell I me? I did want you at least to have your dinner. Oh, well. Hello? Bill, saddle and ride. No, not me, friend Jerry. I'm starting my 48 hours off. We got us a homicide. The address is 718 Hayes. You don't need more than 15 minutes to get here. Ferris. Uh, yeah, I better run. Can't you just finish? No, dear. I don't even know what kind of homicide we're up against. I better get right over there. I'm sorry. Well, it isn't as if you didn't warn me before we were married. 718 Hayes. 718 Hayes. What, Bill? It's the address where I'm supposed to meet Jerry. That's northeast, isn't it? Yeah. Now, why should that address sound familiar? Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. <laughs>